Red Jet RZ F1 by Rise One. This particular variety is a game changer in the Nigerian market. I know many of us in Nigeria will cultivate this variety. On an average, it yields, um, for those in the Southwest, maybe 2 kg to 4 kg. But so far for me, I have gotten up to 6 kg from Red Jet. Per plant. 6 Inside kg per plant in the greenhouse. I've gotten up to 6 kg. So, um, one of the key things to note in bell pepper cultivation is having a good variety is one thing. Management is another thing. While we can testify that rice one varieties are very good varieties in terms of disease resistance, it has resistance to TMV, it has resistance to verticillium wilt, it has resistance to nematodes and the likes. But yet, we still have to manage it very well in terms of IPM, INM, IRUM. IPM is Integrated Pest Management, INM is Integrated Nutrient Management, then IRUM is Integrated Resistance Management. Because you might be spraying, like Mr. Clem said the other time, you might be spraying, people just spray. They'll tell you spray this today, spray this in the next three days, but there's what is called resistance management. For, I'll give an instance now, abamethine now is in one class. They'll tell you if you spray abamethine, don't spray abamethine again, you can spray emamethine. All the, all the tin, emamethine, benzoate, abamethine, ivermectin, they are in the same class. You won't spray anything in the same class. The same thing as um, imidacloprid, acetamiprid, all of them are in the same class. So these are the basics you are supposed to understand. But this bell pepper, like I said earlier, it can give you two to four kg. If you manage it very well, I told you I've gotten 6 kg from red jets in just the two states. And while many of us is going, to, we are going to argue that it's because of our temperature, I get a lot of that from people. Um, sometime this year, we had climate change in just, and our temperature went as high as 35 degrees outside. So imagine inside the greenhouse when the optimum temperature for bell pepper cultivation is room temperature. 26 to 28 degrees Celsius. But we're hitting about 38, 39 inside the greenhouse. But yet, we're still able to produce quality bell peppers. You see my bell peppers, they are quite big. Um, Ryzen will tell you that Red Jet gives you an average of 200 to 250 grams per fruit. I get 300 to 350 grams per fruit. Management, yes. So to control the, um, the temperature in the greenhouse, we install shade net, 50% shade net. There are different types of shade nets. We have the 50%, 60, 70, 20, 30, 40. Sorry, how do you install the shade net? You install it inside here, yeah, on top of the binding wire. Yes, you yeah, so install the shade net on, on top of the binding wire. I use the 50% and it works for me. I'm sorry, I want to ask yeah. question. What does that do for you? You installing the um, shade net? Yeah, it reduces the temperature inside the greenhouse significantly. Yeah. Okay. So now you can see it's very hot. If there were shade nets here, it would be very cool. So yeah, but shade net itself has its own disadvantage. Okay. Uh, now I'm talking based off experience. So when you put the shade net and the temperature has dropped, it means this, the plants are not receiving sufficient sunlight. Yeah. You start having flower and fruit abortion because they are not getting the, um, they are not meeting their light requirements. Your fruit will start dropping. I think sometime this year, earlier this year, it was quite hot in just. I had to put the shade net and yet my fruits were aborting. I was having a lot of fruit abortion and it bothers me because of the way I trellis it. I will talk about trellising. It bothered me a lot, but there was nothing I could do. My hands were tied. If I remove it, the big fruits are going to get scalded by the sun. And if I leave it, the flowers are going to abort. So instead of using my fruits that are there, that will still give me money, I decided to just leave it like that. See, the temperature adjusts itself. So for trellising, Sorry, I want to ask another question. Okay. Very sorry. So what you're trying to say in essence is if the weather is too hot, it also affects your does it affect your flowers? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. You start having the three major reasons for flower abortion. One is poor nutrition. Okay. Secondly is extreme temperature. If the weather is too hot or it's too, too cold, cold. You, you are going to have flower abortion. So those are the two major reasons you have flower abortion. In that type of case, what can you do? If it's nutrient management, is um, poor nutrition, you have to um, improve on your nutrient management. They are um, just like humans, people that go to gym now, they will tell you I have protein requirements, I eat two calories. It's the same thing for bell peppers. Yeah. They have their nutritional requirements. 
you work on it based off the fertilizers you have at your disposal. I want to ask something. If I excessively spray this plant, yes. it, can it also cause flower abortion? Um, I mean excessively spray, like I spray today, I spray tomorrow, or give a higher dosage than I'm supposed to, can it also cause flower abortion? And what could be the effect on the plant? It may not cause flower abortion directly, but it might be phytotoxic to your plant. It might cause what is called phytotoxicity. So when you have phytotoxicity, the leaves have been affected, and we know that this is a leaf that feeds the plant. If they have been affected, your flowers are not getting the nutrients they are supposed to get, so they will start dropping. So normally, you, I don't know for myself, I'll speak for myself, my spring schedule is three times a week. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Friday. And Only insecticide or including and Depends, it depends on the temperature or the humidity. Okay. Another thing. Is it, is it, it has to be insecticide. Yeah. Three times. You know, is it insecticide or including okay. fungi? One, one by one, one please. One by one. Okay. Fungi yes. okay, let me answer it now. Yeah. For me, most times it's insecticide. And I use mostly organic. Okay. Because chemical number one is expensive. And me, I'm very cautious of what I give to my plants because I sell these things and I eat it. So I use organic two times, so chemical once months. a week. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So uh, Mr. Clemens, I know you will come into this too. You know all this while that we have been talking, spraying, spraying, spraying. I just remember that all we, all you put focused on was the incenticides, incenticides, incenticides. So do you spray incenticides, spray fungicide, or okay. you only wait until you observe that is a fungi right infection okay. affecting your plant before you spray? So I do scouting every day because fungi is not fungi infection is. Infestation is not something that is common with bell peppers. So when I scout and I notice that I have powdery mildew, because the most common fungi that affect bell peppers are powdery mildew. One, we have southern blight, we have fusarium root, we have verticillium root. Those are the common things that affect bell pepper. If I notice my plants are wilting, I just, in my head, I know it's verticillium or fusarium. Immediately I start drenching with trichoderma or pseudomonas. I drench. And those things do not have residue on the plant and they are not phytotoxic, this bio stuff. Yeah. So I drench with a lot of it. I drench two or three times a week. Maybe if I'm doing my normal spraying. Now it's important for us to know that all of these trichoderma, pseudomonas, they are fungi, but they are antagonistic fungi. So when you are spraying them, you are not going to spray any fungicide. Mm -hmm. Can if not, yeah. can, you use, can you also use a copper-based fungicide to drench? Yes, 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 yes. The chemical part, you use copper-based. Um, mm -hmm. The copper one outside and the metal laxy. To yeah, to drench. Yeah, to drench. To, to drench. Yeah, it helps with fusarium, wilting, and verticillium, and also southern blight. But mostly I use the trichoderma and I also use the copper. Also, pyroclostrobin works, which you can find in Cabrio. We use it sometimes. Cabrio. <coughs> yes, to drench. So, so now, uh, the, the fungicide, when you are spraying the fung, okay, outside the one you drench, the yeah. trichoderma you mentioned. When you want to spray other fungicide, yeah, okay. Like, uh, Let me tell you, Marco you spray or you 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 spray. Oh. You just spray on the leaves, yes, or you put so the on, the, on the on the on the on the roots and yeah. you drench on the. It depends on what I want to control. Exactly. If I want to control powdery mildew, I spray the leaf, and I use contact fungicide because the powdery mildew they are always under the leaf. That's why you see them. You see the like eh? contact. I use mostly what works for me is exaconazo. Mancozeb is common. Most of these things have developed resistance. I use Hexaconazo or Tebuconazo. What chemical has that actually been And uh, We have the Hexacal, Del. Excellent. We also have the... I've forgotten the other one, but I have it on the farm. Those are what I use. And immediately you spray that thing. Within three days, you see the effect. Normally for powdery mildew, when you check under the leaves, you see them whitish. But once you spray it, the white will turn rust. It will get necrotic, it will be brown. You just know that it has killed or controlled the powdery mildew. So the, the one that has black black spots on the leaf, what is the name of it? Uh, it it might be blight, it might be water leasing, it might be septoria leaf spots. Those are the things. For those ones, you can use the paraclostrobin. You can also use the axostrobin. And there's one other one, difeconazo. Those are the ones we use for this one. Yes. I don't know the names. I usually call active ingredients so that when you go to the store, you can. The, the AI is better. So that the AI is better because when you just go to your when you go to your conventional store that you want to buy your pesticides from, then you can see there several companies have 
some of these agency readers the in different name. formulations different in different names so you the ai is okay for you just go you tell them they know what to give you and it will and help cheap cheap ones yeah. for me again i'm not promoting any brand but for good pesticide the ones that they, they don't they don't compromise on the quality they are Sigenta and UPN and also the rainbow yeah. those are the artists I use they don't compromise on quality there are some other people I will not call their name that they reduce the concentration of the, of the active ingredients so that it will be cheaper for farmers to afford that one you, you see that you require more more spray more spray than the the normal one you see so it's something like economical. it's not economical you see something like um, Tian now they will tell you to use 0.5 mil per liter of water which is way low well, there are some other distinct that have similar active ingredients they will tell you 20 30 and before you know you are using more you are spending more buying so, this case system. i want to, I want to ask one question also okay. just a minute uh Uche. um also you should know that every pesticide that you are spraying has some form of residue on the plant especially when it is synthetic yes. so there are a particular number of time that you can spray within the cycle of the plant so the fact that you have your your you are, you are seeing pests on the plant doesn't mean you should continue spraying it because if the maker may say three times, you know, uh, before you in the cycle, don't spray five times. The implication is that there will be phytotoxicity and then there will be residue which the people which, which people can would consume eventually to not be healthy. Okay, so let's try to stay uh, better in mind. I think he has asked a question, but let me just verify. So basically, what you're saying, if you don't see any sign of fungal infection, it's best for you not to spray any sort of fungal side. No, no, it is best to be proactive. Okay. Then curate it and start trying to cure them. Neem oil acts as both a, an insecticide and, and also a fungicide. Yeah. So it works both ways. So most of the time we use neem oil. I always, every time in a week, I spray neem oil once. Same as me. Yeah, so it works um, both ways. Another yeah. way we also improve our yield on the farm is pruning. I think it's the game changer.